There is no doubt that for most people, Brexit is the biggest change that has happened to the UK in living memory. And most would agree it has not gone well. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I think Britain is looking ever more isolated and why in the short to medium term, it is not an investable market. Reason number one, the economy. The UK economic outlook is the worst in the G7. Of all the G7 countries, it is still the only one not to have recovered to pre-pandemic levels. And sluggish growth in the next 18 months means the UK economy will not recover to pre-pandemic levels until the final quarter of 2024. Now, since the referendum in 2016, the EU's GDP has grown by around two and a half times that of the UK. Inflation in the UK is also very high at just over 10%, and this does not compare well with the EU at around 7%, the US at around 5%, and Japan at around 4%. Number two, the lack of new free trade deals. The UK government has only managed to agree four new trade agreements since leaving the EU. The deals with Australia, New Zealand and Japan look as though they will add very little to the UK economy, if anything at all. And in fact, exports to Japan have actually fallen. The recent agreement with the Asia-Pacific Trade Pact, which is the biggest new trade deal since leaving the EU, will at best only add 0.08% GDP to the UK economy. Yes, less than 0.1% GDP to the UK economy. And this is over a span of around 15 years, so hardly inspiring. And there's no agreement in sight with the US either. Number three, a tight labour market. As a result of the ending of freedom of movement, many companies in the UK have found it difficult to hire workers, resulting in a competitive disadvantage with other companies in continental Europe. Bloomberg have stated that as a result of the ending of freedom of movement and also the result of the ending of frictionless trade with the European Union, this is going to cost the UK £100 billion a year in lost output. Number four, strikes and a collapsing infrastructure. In living memory, the UK has never seen so many public sector strikes, in particular in the health and public transport sector. The UK national health system has virtually collapsed and ambulance waiting times have increased. On average, it takes around 90 minutes for an ambulance to respond to somebody who has had a stroke, has severe burns or chest pains. And an estimated 7.2 million people are waiting to start routine hospital treatment in the UK, i.e. more than 1 in 10, an almost unbelievable figure. And it needs to be stated as well that before Brexit, 10% of the health workers in the UK were from the European Union. This is now down to less than 5%. And the social care system in the UK has also been very badly affected as well. Number five, getting rid of the investor visa. In February 2022, the UK scrapped the investor visa, offering fast-track residency to foreign investors. Another sign that the UK is becoming more and more isolated. Number six, increase in taxation. The UK is increasing taxes. Corporation tax has recently increased from 19% to 25%. And capital gains allowance, annual allowance, has decreased from £12,300 to £6,000. And in the next financial year, will decrease further to only £3,000. Again, this puts the UK in a less competitive situation, especially if you are a company wanting to set up in the UK, or indeed if you are an investor. 
Now contrast this to Italy, where the new Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni, is actually cutting taxes. Number seven, threatening to break international law. Now, Britain's reputation internationally has taken quite a hit since on a number of occasions it threatened to break international law, in particular when it came to the Northern Ireland Protocol. And when you lose your reputation internationally, you're less likely to get good free trade deals. Number eight, full import controls by the end of 2023. Now, we've already seen by leaving the single market how much imports and exports with continental Europe have been affected. But by the end of the year, this is likely to get worse as the UK introduces full border checks for imports coming from the EU. Number nine, the effects on the city of London. Now, before the referendum in 2016, the London stock market was a long way ahead of the Paris stock market. So in terms of value, we are talking $1.5 trillion. But now Paris is actually presenting a serious challenge to London and market values are actually quite similar. Now the city is the UK's single most significant sector providing 10% of all UK GDP and around 11% in tax revenue. So if it were to lose its status as the number one financial center in Europe, that would be a significant hit to the UK economy. And places like Milan have benefited from Brexit with many workers choosing to move to Milan instead of London. And many companies creating new jobs in cities like Milan instead of London. And in 2021, Amsterdam overtook London as Europe's largest trading centre. And only recently, Microsoft claimed that the EU is now a better place for business than Britain. This is really a damning statement. And many companies in the UK have stated that Brexit is really having a damaging effect on them and making them less competitive in Europe. And finally, number 10, if you think things are going to get better in the future, perhaps, let's say, if the Conservative government, which advocated Brexit, loses the next election, think again. Because if the Labour Party were to come into power, things could actually get even worse for the UK. Because what's happening here is that the Labour Party is not planning on going back into the single market. But not only that, with the Labour Party, you are likely to see even higher taxation coming in. And also, if you're a landlord in the UK and the Labour government were to be in power, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you. Things are already difficult if you are a landlord in the UK, but things are likely to get a lot worse if Labour come into power. So over the course of the short to medium term, I think things are really not looking too great for the UK. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, do you agree with me? Do you think the UK will recover? And if so, when? Are we looking at the medium term or the long term? I would love to know your thoughts. And in answer to the question, is Brexit Britain becoming the North Korea of Europe? It's not, but it is looking a lot more isolated and a lot less competitive than it has been for a long time or in my lifetime anyway. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks ever so much for watching and I shall see you soon on the next video.